welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're doing well. Today we're wrapping up the empties. I'm so freaking excited to kind of do some of these wrap up videos. Sometimes it's hard for me to do a wrap up video when like technically the year's not over. So I have a couple coming for basically December and finishing up 2020. And this video has a couple different parts. So I'm gonna be sharing with you my empties that I've collected so I can get them gone, especially cause I'm moving. I'm like definitely not bringing trash to my new place that is old trash. You know what I mean? Like it's not happening. So I'm excited to share that with you. I'm excited to also share with you the final numbers of like what the total of products I used up in 2020 was. Pretty shocking numbers personally, I think. I think it was a lot, okay? And then I also wanna specifically just kind of look at my makeup empties because I used to do makeup empties every single year specifically, so I had enough products to share empties alone of just makeup, like, and this year, I definitely don't have nearly as many products as I've had in past years, but I am proud of the makeup first off that I used up. And I also think that looking at what I actually went through, what I actually finished up, there are a lot of patterns. And I think like kind of looking into that is a great way to see what you maybe could spend more money on or not. Like I just think like investigating your buying habits and using habits and all that can give you a lot of information to hopefully make better decisions for yourself. So anyway, let's just get into the process products that I've used up and then we'll go from there. First off, let's talk about candles cause they've been my shit. I've been loving candles so much and I finished up another Bath and Body Works candle. This is the Caramel Pumpkin Swirl. Now this is my second one ever that I've burned of this specific scent and I think it's hilarious because the scent I had of this before, like the, the candle. It took me like four years to go through because I'd burn it once and it was just too sweet for me. And then this year I burned this all in like one season, <laughs> which I think really reflects the change in my taste for scents. Like I love a bakery scent now in a way that I never really have. I'm so sorry. I know you can hear the lawn. I'm trying to just ignore that it's happening, but. <laughs> They really want my attention. Naturally, I'm gonna read you this scent description. It says luscious caramel, ground cinnamon, rich brown sugar, creamy vanilla with essential oils. And yeah, this is just like sickly sweet almost, but honestly, so perfect for the season. So perfect for like October, even September, October, November, like perfect candle. Really enjoyed having this, really enjoyed how this made the house feel. And I can see myself repurchasing this in the future. I also have like my eye on a lot of different candle brands. So I might branch out and try something else, but let's take a break. I'll come back. I'll come back. All right. And we're back. It's been, I don't know, five hours. <laughs> I've been gone for a long time. I've had like a two hour conversation with my mom on the phone. I've eaten Portos. If you're in LA, you know what it is and it's delicious. I've edited and posted a whole other video. So that all being said, uh, my makeup is different. I amped it up. It was just getting kind of tired. So I had to just go all the way in and like kind of spice it up a little bit. So I didn't look so drained and kind of, you know, I just wanted to look a little better. So Add a little more makeup, got a little bit more glam than before, and we're here and ready for basically part two, which is still just part of this one video. Okay, anyway, caramel pumpkin swirl. <laughs> really enjoyed it, would purchase it again. I'm gonna leave it there because we got like so much more to talk about in this video. Another candle that I used up is one of my favorites. I'm actually really happy with how long this lasted. So this is from Times and it's the Fraser for a candle. I did get this sent to me. I would purchase it and have purchased this candle though before. I've mentioned it a million times, but it is my absolute favorite pine tree scent. So good. Oh, and the glass candle jar, this one is so nice. It is a smaller candle than I'm used to. It's just a one wick, but it lasted me the whole holiday season. And I'm definitely like a bigger is better and more is more and better type of person in a lot of ways. But I'm realizing with candles, sometimes like these holiday scents, it is nice to like buy the candle during the holiday, use it for that holiday and then move on to other things instead of having them kind of linger and hang on. Like it's kind of nice, you can try something new and I feel like I tend to get like a horde of things pretty fast, like I <laughs> just accumulates. And so I like the idea of being able to actually use the things that I have in the season that I want them and buy them for. That's like a nice thing to me. Anyway, this is an expensive candle though. It's like 30 bucks. This is like honestly though what my bougie dreams are made of. So I could definitely see myself like purchasing this in the future. I probably will. Naturally, naturally I have hand soaps because it's my life over here. I do have two Bath & Body Works ones. These were ones that we were kind of like already working on and I'm glad to be through with them. Apples and brown sugar smelled nasty to me. I did not like it at all. It says baked apples, brown sugar, 
sugar and flaky pie crust. You can smell like the flaky pie crust and the baked apples. It kind of smelled stinky to me. Like Sam and I both were not fans. This one on the other hand is afternoon apple picking and I loved this. It smelled like just fresh apples, really great. I love an apple scent. I didn't like that this was dyed so red. Like when you put it out on your hand, it was like super red. It didn't like stain or anything. I just didn't, it felt very fake. I didn't like that. I would have rather have been clear and smelled really great, but I wanna use this as a warning to not water down these soaps from Bath and Body Works unless you're very careful because they will spit at you. When we like kind of, you know, add a little water, kind of got the most out of your hand soap, you know how you do. Um, I think I sprayed this on me two times at least because when you do it, it like shoots out and gets on your clothes. It's like the worst, oh so annoying. But as you guys know, I bought a ton of Blue Land soaps, which I have some of those as well. And I can already see, and I'm already excited because I have two of those soaps um, in here. And the thought that I was trying to finish was that I'm happy that I don't have two more of those plastic bottles in here. I just have these two little packages. And I'm excited to kind of only have have these left. I think with the Bath and Body Works soaps, I have one more I'm currently using in a bathroom. And then I think I have a couple unopened, maybe max like three, and then it's just these ones. So anyway, the Blue Land soap, if you don't know, it's like a tablet you put into water and then it makes foaming soaps. I think they come out to about $2 a tablet. So maybe it's $12 for six of them. I'm not sure. Anyway, I have a few from the Holiday Scents. This is Peppermint. I'm using it currently, but it is almost done. Enjoyed this, smells just like a nice peppermint scent. Nothing like insanely amazing, but nothing bad at all. I did enjoy it. Evergreen, on the other hand, I think has been my favorite scent we've used. It smells so good. I mean, I'm obviously a sucker for pine tree scents, so this smelled really nice, and Sam also was like, ooh, I like that one. So definitely wish they had this as a six pack on its own, and I would, I would pick that up because I did like this scent so much. And again, I've just been enjoying actually the Blue Land hand soap dispensers and um, just like the system of it all. Definitely can see myself continuing with it. You know, I'm doing the whole like price thing with the empties. And although I don't pay full price for the Bath and Body Works hand soaps at 750, they still do come out to like three at the minimum and more like four ish dollars a piece when I get them on sale. And so this is by far cheaper. And like I said, I do enjoy that it's way less packaging like it's just so nice and so it's just working out It's working out over here really enjoy it and out of the blue land stuff I do so far suggest or you know, like if you were looking into it, I do think it's nice Okay, I have a few hair things Batiste. Oh my gosh It's been forever since a Batiste has been in here or really a dry shampoo in general during like lockdown I haven't been going out as much So I feel like I just like let my hair get greasier instead of like making it <laughs> nice with dry shampoo But I've missed it Dry shampoo obviously helps so much and I really do feel like I can get just so much more wear out of my hair. What a great little tagline. Tropical smells good. I don't know, it's just not my favorite. It's like this weird fake coconut. I don't love it, but you know, it's the one I pick up. So there's that. If you don't know my thoughts on Batiste and dry shampoos at this point, I don't know, go watch a few other empties. Cause I feel like I could make like a two hour long video of just me talking about dry shampoo. I think I have a whole video dedicated to dry shampoo. like. Help. Anyway, next I have this viral celeb luxe extreme hot pink dye shampoo So if you guys wondered how I kind of kept my hair when it was really pink I would obviously dye it like normal and bleach it But as the color kind of faded I would use this to kind of reamp that and let it like last longer This works really well. It is quite expensive at 35 my mom's a hairdresser, so I get a discount on it, but anything like this I think works really well. I do suggest like the hot pink one or none of the pastel ones, cause basically the pastel ones are just like watered down color. Like just get this and use conditioner and like cut it, you know? Cause I don't even use this to wash my hair. I use this as just like a leave-in dye in the shower that happens to be a shampoo. But I do find the shampoos work better than conditioners. Like it just soaks in more. My ideal hot pink is like bright and light and not too magenta, not too purple, not too deep. This is a a little bit deeper than I'd like, but as it fades out, it's not bad. I don't know, I would use it again, I guess. And what's in my hair now is a mix of the lavender, which kind of looks blue, but it's very light. And this, cause I had like one use left and I was like, I'm not bringing it to the new place. So <laughs> I enjoy these, I would continue to purchase them. Beware though, because it will stain your hands. Usually it's nothing that even lasts longer than in the shower, maybe around like my dry skin and my like 
cuticles or something, but it will stain a little bit. So I work pretty fast and then let it sit while I like wash my body. I think this is the last like hair thing and it's a little mini of the Briogeo Farewell Frizz. It's the leave-in spray. This was nice. It smelled nice. It worked fine. Like I feel like this leave-in spray, I think it's the Unite 7 Minute Miracle or 7 Second Miracle Spray. The, it's a 10 one. Like all those to me are very similar. I don't know. My hair is so thin. I do get very tangly, but I do tend to get greasy also. So I have to be kind of careful. I keep this at the bottom. It does detangle, but for me, I feel like Moroccan oil is fine. So I'll just use that in my ends. And then with my brush, it kind of all works out. But as I have little samples, I tend to use them. Anyway, I thought it was fine. I can see why people like it but there are a lot of things I think that do this. That's just my humble opinion. <laughs> this is gonna be some proof, y'all, that I have been washing my face. So proud of it. Again, I'm really happy with how much my skincare and like the whole routine and all that has changed. I have a Bliss Makeup Melt, and this kind of like melts your makeup off. I don't think it did the best job. It definitely wouldn't remove all my eye makeup, but I did, I did finish it, proud of that. I've had this thing forever. They sent it to me like, at this point, probably almost two years ago. And I finally use it. I also have a mini of the Pure Lease Blue Lotus 4-in-1 Cleansing Milk. I remember really liking this and I've gone through a full size of this um, and I didn't love the mini, I don't know. So I wouldn't purchase this and I don't love it as much as I thought I did initially. So there's that. I also have an Origins Checks and Balances. This I really enjoy. This does give you a bit of a squeaky clean feel and this is definitely like a shower uh, face wash for me. So I have like a get ready at night face wash which kind of sits by my sink but then I have like one where I'm in the shower so I don't have to move one around and I feel like this is a nice one. I'm usually not getting into the shower with a full face of makeup so this just kind of resets everything. I feel like it's nice and I get out and put stuff on immediately. I love the smell. It's kind of minty. I love the feeling on the face like I like this I've used a full one up of this before and I enjoyed it floss break I used up a floss and it's fine toothpaste break <laughs> this is the Marvis Karakum I love this so good I have quite a few more tubes of this it's a really pricey toothpaste I don't necessarily like think you have to have this but do I enjoy it yes Yes, I do. We finally used up this First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. And when I say we, I mean me and Sam, mostly Sam, we would use this on his back when he gets out the shower. So I'm very happy we used it. I don't think that this is worth the price. I think when I looked it up, it's like 30 something dollars. And I think you can get this other places, but I feel like the smell on this, sometimes it smells gross, even though it's supposed to not smell like anything. Like, I don't know, we, we tend to have it. It's like the second one we've used up of this. I don't know if I'd purchase it. I'd rather just purchase like Cetaphil or CeraVe or one of those. I feel like so yeah, it works nicely. It works fine. You know, it's fine I also have a few mask products in here. I know. Oh my gosh. I'm masking. I'm cleansing I am doing all the skincare stuff. I'm really trying over here and it's been more fun I think always why I never want to do skincare is it's like Ugh, boring like no, thank you, but I've actually been enjoying it There's been this kind of like calm routine to it that I've enjoyed um, Of course the feeling of like fresh skin and then like when you add all the products in, it's just like soft and supple and just like smooth and kind of glistening Oh, who doesn't love that? I love that. Anyway, I made Sam do this mask with me I think we were watching the Hobbit or something. This is the glam glow gravity mud firming treatment Didn't realize this was one of those like peel off masks and so it does it does say on here <laughs> to do like a thicker layer. It's like, don't put in hair. And like Sam had like all of it in his hair. I think I might have pictures if I do. I'll put a picture up. Um, but yeah, it's like a metallic mask. So that was kind of fun. It was fine. It kind of was burning, I think a little bit. I think we talked about that. I can't remember. I was just glad to use up this mini. I think I've had this since like we moved here. <laughs> Like this was so old. It didn't seem expired, so that's good. Uh, maybe that was the burning, but I'm so glad that we used that up. And basically it was enough for like two, and it was perfect for us to do it together. The other one I used up is from Yensa. This is the pumpkin turmeric, and I really love this. I actually have a backup of this that they sent me, which I'm so excited to bust out. I actually had been saving this because I do really like it. It's like a semi-translucent goo, <laughs> and then it has like sugar in it, and that is like the polishing part. So you put it on, leave it on, feels nice, and as you wash it away, it kind of turns white and all the sugar kind of dissolves and it exfoliates as it goes. It's really nice. My skin feels so refreshed, so smooth after I use it. But this is also a reminder, another like PSA in here. Use your products when they're good. I know a lot of us have the aversion of using something that's more expensive or our favorite because we want to use other things up. We want to savor it. It does not work when things go bad. And I feel like when I use this, it definitely had a different scent to it. It smelled a little crayony. Like it just went off a little, but I still used it, finished it up because I had 
like one use left. And I really wish that I hadn't waited to use that obviously one use so that it would have been more fresh. And so if you have those products, I'm telling you right now, if you have those products around you, use them. Use the stuff you love. Seriously, use it. That is why you have it. That is why you bought it, to use it and to love it. Don't let it go bad. That's worse. That's so horrible. Anyway, um, used it, loved it. I do want to bust open the other one, but I want to make sure I'm going to use it. I mean, I've had this probably like over a year, so it's not like it went off super early. It's just like, hello, things don't last forever. Nothing gold can stay. Let's talk about a few makeup type items. This is an empty that Sam contributed. It's a Blistex Soft and Lush. Literally don't know where he found this he just kind of scavenges around and finds weird lip balms and then he had this and I was like oh my gosh it's almost done let's finish it so we finished it in a couple of days it literally had like nothing left and so that's in here and it's another makeup empty for me for the year the other two products are from covergirl I have an exhibitionist mascara this is probably my top favorite mascara I've talked about that a lot I've gone through a couple different tubes of it and it's just time for this to go not only is it like dried up and used but it's also like past its time and then this was also something I got to retire because I re purchased it. It's the CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow in Light. It's what I have in my brows now. I use it all the time. Super great. It adds like fibers. It adds volume. I feel like it adds a lot of hold as well. And I love that it's tinted because my brows are blonde naturally. So it really adds that definition I'm looking for. So yeah, three more makeup empties to specifically the makeup section. I have a little perfume sample here. This is from Skylar and it's the Capri scent. This smelled nice. It's kind of just like a beachy type scent. I feel I think that maybe a couple of years ago I would have like absolutely fallen in love with this but I do feel like my scent profile has definitely turned way more yeah just like unisex and a little bit more I guess you could say like complicated and this just feels a little too like it almost smells like a, a body fragrance to me it's not that I can't appreciate it for what this is like oh it's okay but it's not for me like oh I wouldn't buy that like oh no that smells nice and if you like it go for it but for me and uh, not mine so there's that and it's interesting I'm glad I never like bought one of those back in the day when I maybe would have been more interested in it. I have a hand cream here. This is a bougie ass hand cream. This is from Aesop. I bought this when I was in Australia. I think I might have bought this when I was with Melissa Gold. Do you guys know? Okay, if you guys don't know Melissa Gold and you're in at this part of the video, please go subscribe to her. She's so awesome. I freaking love her. I think you would really enjoy her videos. I don't know if I bought this or just the hand wash because I did go to Aesop twice when I was in Australia. I believe this is an Australian brand or maybe it's a New Zealand brand. So it's technically cheaper over there, but in the US this retails for like 30 bucks for a hand cream I know <laughs> it's like so apothecary and so posh and so nice. I really love it I just like Aesop as a brand. I really love the perfume If you want to know a perfume scent I like tacit from them smells so nice That's on my list of perfumes that I want. Anyway, this is the resurrection aromatique hand balm. It's nice. I enjoyed this. It's a nice light feel on the hands. It definitely moisturizes. The smell on this is like, mm, it's nice. It's like lemon, but also a little bit earthy. Mm, it's nice. I do love the smell of this. I think they have a hand wash also in this scent, but it's not my favorite hand wash. I don't think the one that smells like this has pumice. The one that I do like does have pumice and that one smells so good too, but again, very earthy and like herby and just good. I like the smells. It's very natural, very nice. Like mm. if I was a bougie ass bitch all the way and had money like that, I'd be buying products like this. I feel really happy to have used that one up. That's another one of those things that I kind of forced myself to use up this year because I was like, I've had this since like the beginning of 2019 and I wanted to make sure I got the use out of it. I don't want this to go bad. I know it's a little bit more natural and all that. I spent quite a bit of money, even with the, you know, cheaper rate in Australia. And so I'm glad I used it up and that I got to enjoy it every last little drop and that it wasn't bad and I had to throw it out, you know? Last two empties, two of the same product. I have two of these because I got one in PR for Ipsy and then this was my first Ipsy bag that I purchased because I like to do that comparison. But anyway, they're both from Glow Recipe. You know, I love Glow Recipe and this is the Banana Souffle Moisture Cream. Loved this. I don't even like the scent of bananas. I don't like the taste of bananas, but I like this. Literally no smell in here because I used up every last drop. I love the texture of this. I think that like Glow Recipe for me is just like everything was such a win. Everything is such a, there's like no smell. Everything is such a win. I love the textures on my skin. I feel like it plays so nicely with my skin. It also works for Sam and we have such different skin types, but I feel like we're we're both we both have different skin types but we're looking for that same kind of feeling overall in the end so like I like to feel moisturized and plump without feeling greasy and Sam's the same way he needs that moisture he needs to feel like he's not 
you know, dying and it's like not flaky, but he doesn't like to feel greasy. He doesn't want to feel overdone. And I feel like Glow Recipe just works for both of us. Would definitely potentially consider buying this in the full size, would be looking out for deals. I mean, so far, everything that I've tried Glow Recipe, I've enjoyed. The Pink Juice Watermelon Moisturizer, love. The Watermelon like Niacinamide uh, Serum, I've been using that recently, really enjoy it. I personally enjoyed the Blueberry Bounce Cleanser when I used one of those up. The only thing I don't love is the Mist. I didn't really love that. Even the mask, like the Pink Juice Mask, Sleeping Mask, I didn't love that. So I guess I don't love everything, but most of the things I've tried, I've really enjoyed. Okay, so that's my empties finishing out the year in total for all of that stuff it would cost $291.46 for me to purchase all that stuff and if you don't know I count mini sizes as just two dollars I don't do all the math of like it's this much product versus how much it costs I don't do all that I just count those as two dollars and I feel like that actually kind of offsets things like the candle at $24 which there's no way in hell I paid $24 for that candle but that is the highest retail price so anyway if you were somehow worried about wondering about numbers about that okay so in total, da -da 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 -da, for the year, I had seven different uh, empties videos talking about products in different ways and showing you all my empties. I had seven this year instead of, I used to do a monthly and I can see myself even from now on kind of going almost quarterly, just, I don't know. I love using products, don't get me wrong. I just don't like doing them monthly anymore or even <laughs> I like doing as few as possible. Like let's put it all in one. Anyway, the total number for the year, I used up two thousand nine hundred and eighty one dollars and forty eight cents worth of product retail value worth of product this year in 2020 or last year in 2020 i think that's amazing i was so close to three thousand i really wish i hit that um but i'm so proud of that in ways that i'm glad i used up and like got used out of that much product i do think i also have to consider the fact that sam's a part of that like shampoo, dry shampoo, lip balms, all those. He's like a part of using it, skincare in general. So that kind of offsets some of that cost too, but damn. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of stuff. I'm glad I tallied up the money portion of my empties this year. I thought that was really interesting and I personally really enjoyed it. But now let's talk about some makeup empties specifically. I have this box here that is all makeup empties and I thought it was really interesting the products and categories that I actually used up the most and that even had products in them in general. I guess technically these don't count as makeup but I am proud of my perfume empties so I'm gonna talk about them. I used up an entire Eccentric Molecules this year. This is Sam and I's like favorite perfume we both wear it we love it and we did repurchase it we love it that much so this is a great one I will probably kind of always have this unless my scent changes but I'll probably always have this in my collection I love 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 it I also got like a super good deal of it on TJ Maxx I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how, but it was like 70 bucks instead of like 140 or something. I also have some little vials. So this is like a double shot, if you will, of the Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume. Love that, also wouldn't mind having that in my collection. Really enjoyed that one. It's like a light, one-noted, very similar, I guess, to like Eccentric Molecule in how it is. Like if you like my scents in perfume, I feel like you would like that one. Like I mentioned the Skylar one, and then I have three of the Jo Malone Bitter Orange or Orange Bitters. I love this. I actually bought a like regular size of this from Joe Malone this year. One of you guys said you bought this and you hated it. So I feel so bad, but I love this. It's like a, mm, it smells just like orange bitters to me. Like it's orangey, but also kind of like deep. There's almost like this masculine kind of warm scent to it. Really, really awesome. Definitely a little different for me, but perfect for like colder months. Like I love wearing this in the winter and like even into the fall. Okay, on to actual makeup. Three foundations. I used three foundations this year. The Yensa, this is the Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum. You remember that one? And also a stick foundation. It's interesting that I used up three foundations and I think, you know, I didn't wear makeup for a, a good portion of this year because of COVID. Some of this year was a little rough, okay? So I would say that I wore makeup less this year than other times and with foundation, that's definitely part of that. So I could see me in a normal year using about four foundations and I think that's just a cool number to kind of note. I'm definitely not someone that that has a ton of foundations. Like I think right now I maybe have like seven or eight in my collection. And so it's kind of good to know how much that is. What does that mean? Like, I don't know. I just love having that knowledge. I feel like it'll hopefully let me make better buying decisions. And I think it's also interesting seeing these that I repurchased both of these. I love these enough that I repurchased them. Um, this one I didn't, but these two I did. And I have them back in my collection again. I only had two brow products in my empties 
what's that about? Weird. Again, I guess that's because I wasn't doing as much makeup, but I'm surprised. I don't know if I was just switching back and forth between things so much that I never like fully used something up. I don't know what's going on. That's odd. I should have like 10 brow products in here, I feel like, but I didn't. So I don't know what that's about. Maybe I just missed their misplaced them. I don't know, but thought that was kind of weird. I usually go through way more, especially pencils. So it'll be interesting to see if it like catches up with me next year or what. I feel like I had a healthy amount of mascaras. This one's from Tarte. I had an Ofra one. I had a Milk Makeup one. I feel like these two, I didn't use a ton. They just like kind of had to go. But the other three, which I have the CoverGirl and this one is from Lorac, the Luxe one, those definitely all like really got a ton of use. And I think that's pretty accurate. I'm definitely someone who like, if I like a mascara, I'm gonna use that thing till it is bone dry, you know? Like you gotta pry it from me. And then I'm like, fine, I guess you're right. <laughs> and so I'm not surprised by this. I only had three little mini primers in here and I thought that was interesting because I always use primer anytime I use foundations. And so this isn't that much primer, per like foundation bottles I used up. So I'm wondering if I can hopefully finish off a couple of bigger ones this year, like bigger primer bottles. So we'll see what kind of dents I can make, but it's interesting because some of these I don't remember. Like I do not remember this Glam Glow one. Glad I used it though. Glad I have these empties. One concealer, one singular concealer. Most of this year I had like maybe two concealers in my collection. I think I have the most that I've had in a couple of years right now. And I think I have like five. This is the Glossier Stretch and I've actually repurchased that. So I have this back again. I just must have found some of my really great Holy Grail face products because I just repurchased them. And last, for my biggest category, lip balms. I'm actually really happy I have so many amazing lip balms in here. Oh my gosh. A lot of these, like, these three, I don't know much about because these are mostly Sam. Like, maybe I've used a couple of them a couple of times, so who cares about them? But they do count for my empty. <laughs> <laughs> but I have so many amazing lip balms in here and this makes me happy because y'all know I love a good lip balm and it feels good that I actually use them, right? Like I do go through my lip balms, that's so nice. So I have a W7 one, this is like a dupe for the Laneige. I have an actual Laneige one, just a mini, but still it has quite a bit of product in it and I really like the sweet candy scent. I have a Glossier one, this is the coconutbalm.com. We tended to use this as like a cuticle cream or like a really intense hydrator for our hands because I personally didn't love it on my lips, but we got through it. I have a mini of the Fresh Sugar Lip Balm. I love this favorite, one of my favorite lip balms. Seriously, so good. I think it's worth the money. Don't buy the minis though, they suck. And then this one is so good, Sulawasu. This is top notch, baby. If you, mm, this is the apricot one. This is one I would also say is worth the money. Obviously the packaging is just absolutely stunning and beautiful, but the way that this feels on your lips is so supple and nice and it's not too thick of a balm, but not too thin and slimy and oily. I hate balms like that. This is just so perfect. Your lips feel amazing. And if you are into luxury lip balms, if you wanna buy something that is a treat yourself moment, but you're actually gonna go through it because you actually use lip balms, this is a good one to try. I'm just saying, if you're a connoisseur of lip balms, haven't tried this yet, I do suggest, highly suggest, very, very good. Interesting, right? No eyeshadows, no bronzers, no blushes, no highlighters, get out of here. And so that is something that I'm kind of wanna work on next year. Like I do wanna have a few bronzers in there. I do wanna have maybe a blush, like what, maybe? I think that'd be something fun to work toward. But that also just lets me know, again, like when I'm buying a blush, I should know going in that I'm probably never gonna finish this product. And that's either because I'm gonna like get rid of it but even if I have it for like five years, I probably won't, even if I'm using it all the time, I probably won't even be able to use it. So I'm not sure how that should affect my buying, but it is something that I think is good information to potentially think about when I'm making purchases. Like just keep it in the back of your head. I don't know, maybe it can help you. And when I say you, I mean me. <laughs> all right, so in total for makeup, I used up 21 products and I'm pretty proud of it. I'm pretty proud of it. Definitely nowhere near the amount of empties in makeup that I used to do, but I'm still really happy Happy, especially with I know the size of my collection again how much I actually wear makeup this year compared to past years and it does make me want to wear my makeup more I'm definitely in a more creative stage right now which is so amazing and I love it where I want to try things I'm excited to try new things like the stuff I'm bringing in I'm actually using whereas there have definitely been times in my collection where I will bring in new things and like it was way more about the buying than it was about the trying and playing and I'm glad that right now what I am bringing in I am actually trying I am actually 
actually playing with, I'm actually excited to use. That's kind of off topic, so we're gonna leave it there. I think I'm just gonna end the video, I don't know, I'm gonna end the video here. That's my wrap up for my empties for 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I definitely think, you know, the money aspect, the item aspect, all of that, just, I love it. I love breaking all that down. When I think of all the stuff I've used throughout the year, I'm like, would I rather have $3,000 or all the stuff? I'd rather have 2000 and then just purchase like a select thousand dollars worth of those products probably. That's the reality. So anyway, thanks for being here. I hope you have an amazing day. I will see you in my next video and that's everything. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Bye.